Hey guys, I interrupt this Pet Tech video already in progress to tell you that I have a very special message for you guys right at the end of this video. This could be my biggest giveaway ever. I'll tell you all about it at the end of the show. Hey folks, today the Aqua Shopper returns to unbox a bunch of cool stuff. I've got a lot of neat things to show you this week. Stick around. Hey YouTube, this is Pet Tech, and of course, you know, Pet Tech is a very active consumer. I can't even show you all the things I bought because some of them are alive and they'd look funny flopping around on top of the box. I did a little bit of shopping when I was at Aquashella, and of course I came home with another tank. And of course I've got this month's My Aquarium box. Since you're all probably sick of hearing me talk about Aquashella at this point, I think I'll, I'll start with it. I'll go through that first. So as you know, Aquashella wasn't that far away. Chicago was a very drivable distance, and that meant I got to pick up a few things. I had a lot of comments in the live stream that they were asking uh, if I was picking up wood, because usually when I go to these things, I go and I shop for uh, driftwood, but I'm kind of full up right now. But I have all the driftwood I need at this point, so uh, I went and looked at a few other things. Here's a pro tip. If you're shopping at a convention and you're going to be there the whole weekend, buy your stuff Unless it's a limited quantity and you feel like you need to get it, especially with fish and stuff, sometimes you don't wait. But with other things, if you wait to the last day or maybe the last few hours, you always get a big discount. So if you're willing to hang out kind of towards the end, that's when you really find your, your good bargains. Now, a lot of you know Brian's Fish Tanks, and he, has a, he had a booth there, he and his wife, and they were selling all kinds of good stuff. But I, I saw some views that caught my eye while I was doing the live stream, and I had to stop and and take a look and I could not help but pick up a bag and uh, it looks terrific. I've added it to my 20 gallon that you can't see because it's behind all this stuff. I broke most of it up and I added it to the 20 gallon. Uh, I think I ended up putting one small piece in the top of the, the steampunk tank just to see if it can live inside that canopy. But most of it went to the 20 gallon. I'm excited to see what it'll do. Uh, that's the only tank that I've been able to really grow buce in. Uh, and, and get it to look right, and I'm hoping that if I can get a couple of different species of that, maybe I'll never have to buy it again. It's a fairly expensive plant, a real slow growing plant, so if I see if I see a really good looking bag of it, and I think I can get it home for a good price, I always do. But thanks, Brian, for a terrific sample of Buse. I was hanging out kind of close to the Fritz booth most of the weekend, and I wanted to try some of their some of their chemicals that they sell. So I've got some dechlorinator, but I also picked up this which I haven't used before. And uh, it's beneficial bacteria. It's a beneficial bacteria supplement. And I've been using it uh, along with uh, setting up my 20 gallon. I've been adding some fish in there. And uh, the betta that I brought home, which kind of brings me to another thing that I bought at Aquashella, I got my first giant betta. Most a few other people have got giant bettas also, but uh, it's my first one. I haven't had one uh, that's that size. They seem to follow most of the restrictions that any other beta would, would have other than it's perhaps a bit bigger. He's got some really interesting colors. I love the pattern. He's got this kind of stripe that goes down the middle of his face and uh, I've been real, real happy to, to have a beta again. It's sort of the plaquette type too with the shorter fins and I think that'll work. Usually I put them in a spec five gallon and usually when I put a, a beta in there I We'll, we'll take a sponge and put it over the uh, over where the water comes out just to kind of diffuse it, slow it down a little bit. But he hasn't really had much trouble in there. He goes wherever he wants. But also he has the smaller fins, so they're not there just billowing there, grabbing all the current as it goes by. Another thing I picked up is uh, the flipper, but instead of the algae scraper, like you're probably used to if you've seen the flipper products before, it's a magnifying glass. Now, in hindsight, I wish I'd bought the smaller one. Uh, I got this bigger one, but it's uh, it's got a magnet here, and so it kind of works like the algae scrapers and other things, other than you can take this and kind of plant it in a certain spot. I thought this would be especially fun if, uh, if you did a shrimp tank or you had something where it had some kind of smaller species. It probably wouldn't be aesthetically pleasing to have on your tank all the time, you know. But uh, especially if you're keeping an eye on something in particular or you're looking for something to happen. Or on a shrimp tank, just to get a closer look. Especially on a quarantine tank, to get a really close look at new shrimp or new fish. 
and uh, see if they have any telltale signs of trouble, parasites, and whatever. That's about all the shopping I did at Aquashella. I really didn't, I did not go hog wild this year, but I did get a few things, and of course, I always share that with you. Push these guys aside for just a second. Up next, I'm going to do the My Aquarium box. If you're not at all interested in My Aquarium box, Here's the time code for the next thing that I open. I say that not as a diss to my aquarium box, but because I've discovered that more than half of my audience actually isn't in the United States. And my aquarium box is only available there. So a, a fair amount of you will let me know that it's a huge waste of time for you <laughs> to watch my aquarium box openings. And this month's weapon of mass destruction, that the terrible implement of box opening, is a uh, it's a coaster with a mustache on it. Sure to mean certain death. Always keep one of these on you. If you're traveling in bad areas. Also, can be effective at opening boxes. What's in here? A special message from Mike that I'm not going to read you. <laughs> he does... Uh, wish Holly and Kerrigan a, a nice hello. And uh, he's a little aggravated that I didn't make it to aquatic experience with them. Sorry, guys. I hope, hopefully next year, I'll be able to join you. All right. He also has included a, a uh, light switch. Maybe I'll open next month's box with that. <laughs> switch on. All right. So right here on top, we have a advertisement for the aquatic experience. We have four easy steps in how to hatch brine shrimp. I might keep that. <laughs> and we've got the flyer here. Uh, let's see. Wow. We got some Mega Box winners and all their sponsors that kind of make all this possible. You can win a free My Aquarium box by uh, going on Facebook and posting a picture of yours. Here's the card for this month. It looks like the total value of. 4344. Keep this handy because I don't know what something is. Just almost guaranteed. Discard a stone. This says it's a coarse, coarse bubble. It's a plastic air diffuser. Ah, some little air diffusers for your airline driven systems. We have Omnivore crumble. Oh, this is one of my favorites of the foods that they send uh, Because they're bigger chunks and the bigger fish will eat it But I can also just crumble them up and give it to my smaller fish and they all seem to like it The other ingredients are uh, US fish meal, US shrimp meal, kelp, farm fresh spirulina, flax seed, and so on. Still good stuff in there. All right, uh, Python Eco Cleaning Cloth. Reusable safe for glass and acrylic. No soaps or chemicals, no streaks. Oh, so it's a nice little uh, cleaning cloth for your aquarium. It sort of looks like a little ShamWow. I'm gonna open it. Like through the plastic and stuff, it almost felt like it was paper. It's like, dude, is that a paper towel? It's almost like, it's almost, it's a little thicker than a paper towel. I could rip it if I probably tried really hard. But it's a, yeah, it's a nice little reusable sort of a chamois material. Ooh, and lots of botanicals here as we dig into the, the box. Oh. Wow, these are kind of, these are really pretty cool. I gotta say. Every time I get some botanicals, I'm like, oh man. Well, I got a lot of those already. <laughs> but there's so many different kinds. I mean, I haven't gotten these before. These, they, they look similar to other ones I've gotten, but what is this? Let's see here. The botanicals that are in here, we've got large monkey pods, small monkey pods. And myrtle pods. Is that right? Myrtle pods. See, these things are really crazy looking. I like it. Myrtle pods. Definitely put that on your list. <laughs> if you saw something individually that you liked, I think 
if you go to the Mike Marion Box website, you can order this stuff individually if you just want some some pods. And then the rest of these are monkey pods, which are also actually I don't think I've gotten these before. These are a little different than other things. Look, they're little hats. They're little gnome hats. That is sort of awesome. Little gnome hats. Hello. I'm a gnome. Some for your children. Nice. These things are tough, too. Wow. See, these are great. So instead of, like, rocks and things like that, you can add these. Especially if you boil them up enough, they won't give you any tannins. Love it. A very cool My Aquarium box. Thank you, Greg and Mike. Okay, so since I was bringing home a new fish uh, for the five gallon, it, it actually, I wasn't too sure about the heater that was in there before and I wanted to pick up like a real simple, uh, a real simple yet small heater and I happened to be a pet smart and I picked this up. It's a top fin. It's a, it's a 50 watt heater. So it's, it says it's ideal for five to 10 gallon aquariums. Of course, as you should know with heaters, uh, they just, they, they will heat up the room in sort of a relative way to the way you keep the room. So if your room isn't especially cold, then um, you might not even need one if you, if you kept your room warm enough. So this will just bring it up a few degrees warmer than room temperature, which is about it, probably the low 70s upstairs. It's probably the high 60s actually. I, Hollywood probably keep it around 68, 68 to 70 degrees. So in my spec five gallon, this has been keeping the, the water temperature about 78 degrees. So it increased it quite a bit over room temperature and is a, is a pretty good temperature for the beta too, especially for a window aquarium. Another thing that I picked up is uh, this lily pipe. And this is a glass lily pipe. It'll, uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna add it in here where the water comes out. This is almost more of a decorative item than anything else, or, or it's clear, so maybe you don't notice it so much. It's kind of got an attractive sort of lily shape to it. It's going to go in the 20 gallon you see behind me. Uh, I'm going to make it sort of a prettier version of the, the one that came with the canister filter that I have in there. There are two sizes there, and I went with the smaller one, but I'm wondering now if I should have done that. Eh, that'll probably work. We'll know soon. When I go to install this, I'll be sure to shoot a video and show you guys. But literally, it's just I'm plugging a piece of glass into the other side. Probably by the time I do an update on this tank, which will be soon, uh, I'm going to try to have this installed and included in there just to make it that a little bit more attractive. And last but not least, we've got the Pisces by Aquatop. I find a lot of aquariums in this size. Most of them were the specs. So you've got the spec, uh, the original one I think was two gallons or a little under two gallons. The next one was a little under three gallons, or right at you know, 2.75 or something like that. And I had kind of a few of those. The problem is that even small aquariums, small, well-maintained aquariums, can just suddenly have a, a major problem. And if it's your only tank, if it's the only tank you've got, you could be up a creek if, uh, you know, if you're depending on this as your sole life support for, for another animal. I'm a bit of an aquaphile, so I've got aquariums and and other resources to, to keep fish. If something really goes bad, I can usually transfer most of my fish to another system, or I can set up another system that'll do a good job, you know, until uh, the situation's ideal once more. But over time, what I've learned is that um, because I've got a lot of aquariums to maintain, I don't tend to maintain my small ones uh, to the degree that I should, so I've, I've kind of leaned away from like keeping them going. I've got a spec, uh, the spec Eevee was the last aquarium that Fluville sent me and I set that up and it's still running and it's been, it's been a long time. There's no shrimp in it anymore. It's just growing plants in there. And uh, I think I might, I think I might go ahead and put, take that down or give that one to someone else, give it to a friend of mine or something. And maybe replace it with this one or this one with some modifications. That's right, I've got a few ideas for the Pisces here. See, it fits It fits this table that I've got. Uh, I've got a table that's kind of a weird shape, and I think it'd be really fun to kind of make it uh, sort of a two-chambered aquarium. Now, I've got a couple of crazy ideas. Uh, I'll have to play with that and see if they work, but I would like to set this up. I might set it up normally, 
or I might include it as part of sort of a kit bash that I'm going to do. But let's take a look at this and uh, and break it down here. It's a three gallon tank, uh, 55 or 53 gallon flow rate. It does have an LED light at the top. Uh, inside this, unlike the specs and kind of other aquariums that uh, that you normally see here, this has uh, an internal filter. So this is basically a, a real low profile box filter. They include little inserts for these things. I don't tend to like box filters with inserts because uh, this is a product that you have to continue to buy. But, but these kinds of things can be easily modified, so maybe it's not such a big deal. We'll take a look at it and see. On the back, it's showing you a couple of other features and stuff. Of course, it's got a lid uh, with some mounting clips. So it's sort of a rimless tank with a lid. I really love that. Why don't we open it up and really take a look, though. All right. You know, three gallons isn't three gallons isn't a great size for an aquarium, but a lot of people are limited. Like if they want a tank at work or something like that, and they're really limited on the amount of space that they have, and they just want a betta or maybe you know uh, some shrimp. They're not even breeding shrimp. You know, they just hey, I just want a really pretty aquascape tank with some shrimp. Okay. Well, this is this is pretty interesting. Take off this plastic protector, which is on there to keep a keep sort of the. It feels like it's got acrylic on the outside, and down below, down here, it's got an Aquatop logo right here. It's probably hard to see. Inside we have some instructions. And we got this box here. Now, you know, what's crazy looking at it, it looks so much bigger than the spec, but I gotta remember that there's a filter that's gonna take up some of this space. But this is glass. It's not plastic, it's glass. If I'm going to be real picky, I, I love the curve here. So there's no, uh, it's curved, but it's not, it's not completely bowly. Like it's not so bow front that it's going to be extremely distorted. Uh, there will be some internal filter in there. So that will be taking up some of the space. In the back and down below where it's sealed off, it looks nice and clean. No complaints there. It is plastic on the bottom. This probably makes it pretty tough. On the outside, it's got sort of this glossy plastic that doesn't look doesn't look super cheap. It looks actually pretty nice. So that's cool. Shouldn't this have a lid though? Oh, yeah. Here's the lid. I must have pulled it out and then immediately forgot. And this this is plastic. gonna fit like so. Got a little feeding hole at the top. Got some breakaways here, depending on how you wanna, you know, what you might wanna add in there. Or maybe if you wanted to make a little door so you could get to your filter and maintain it, or if you just wanna leave it closed. You could always throw a sponge filter or something else in there if you didn't like the, the filter that it came with. If you want some even lower maintenance, those tiny little sponge filters and things in here would do great. All right, so let's open up this box that comes with it. Sort of some supplements here. We've got the light. The light's pretty nice. Mounted on a, on a little acrylic stand. I'm not sure how it attaches yet. I haven't gotten to the rest of it, so I'll hold this back for a second. And we've got the internal filter, the little box filter. I'll tell you, it 
it's a nice, uh, it's really kind of interesting. It, it looks a little different than I expected. I'm going to pop off the top here to pull in close. Dun, 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 Okay. All right, so we're opening the, opening this. This is the little replaceable, replaceable part. You got a little fine fiber pad there to kind of catch fine particles. And you got your, your uh, charcoal on here. Of course, charcoal is completely, completely optional. When you keep your tank and you won't necessarily need that but you what you could do but this uh this little polishing pad will probably go a long way towards making your water look nice this is in a nice little plastic plastic deal here so what you could totally do if you wanted to is uh is probably peel some of this back and reuse it if you got real creative or you can just shove something else down in here like a piece of foam or something else to kind of polish your water uh, if you didn't feel like using the charcoal. What else have we got here? Oh, it's interesting. It's got little chambers in different parts. And they got handles at the top, which are nice. Okay, so we've got, we've got this. And my best guess is that this is, uh, this is for biological. I don't know, but I don't know. Um, I don't know how that would work. And I don't know for certain that's what it is. I have not read the instructions, obviously. But, uh, yeah. So here's another chamber of this thing. I know it's got ceramics. I can see it down in there. Does it come out? It seems to be sort of trapped down in there. That's interesting. And if I pull out the top. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's kind of interesting. It's got its little... It's, it's pump right here. Got a little uh, something there to keep keep things from getting into it. And this looks like it's going to fit right back inside of here. I give up. How do you open this thing? And uh, blah blah blah. What's funny is inside the instructions here, there's a breakaway diagram that shows you what it's like inside. But I don't really see any instructions for uh, pulling this thing apart. What else is in the box here? Okay, so we've got... Alright, so we've got this here to go, uh, presumably, on the end of the part where it pumps out. And this here, which is the power supply for the light. Now, while I was perusing the instructions, I noticed that uh, we have now identified what this is for. This uh, little clip on the back. So this clip on the back both holds the light, and it uh, it, it holds the and it holds the pump in place. The little filter. There's a little bracket right here. All right. So this is just going to slide onto the back here like that. Whoop. Oh wow, how clever. And then the light. So the light's just gonna go right here. Pretty nice, nice height up here. The higher this is, the more you know, the more spread it gets, and you wanna get it all the way to the corners. Uh, because the filter doesn't go all the way to the bottom, you can do your substrate pretty thick, although I wouldn't do too thick inside of this such a shallow aquarium. It's a pretty attractive little system. I like it. It'll look better with some plants in it or something, but you know, it'd definitely be, it'd definitely be fun to maybe trade this out for, uh, for what I've got going with my spec. I might give my spec to some lucky person at work or something. So I'm definitely going to set this up and, and check it out. You know, with this slit on here, let me see, does that fit? Oh yeah. So you don't have to modify this at all and it'll fit, but of course, it's got a breakaway if you want to take this out. Like you might want to mount this with something else, maybe, or, or uh, you know, maybe you got a different light and you wanted to change it out. You could totally do that. Uh, the lid won't hold you back. It's got little breakaway spots. It's got just enough space back here you could feed, but it's got a feed hole right here also. 
you know, overall, I like it. If you're going to buy a three-gallon tank anyway, uh, definitely check this out. They have different shapes. Looks like they got a more squarish five-gallon. And uh, what's this bigger one? Oh, and they've got kind of a long five-gallon. So they're following kind of along, kind of along the same lines that Fluval did. The biggest difference is that Fluval really partitioned off where their filter is. That has uh, could cause some problems. It lets you hide your heater. Is maybe the, the only huge advantage from one to the other is it'll let you hide that heater. But is it an advantage? <laughs> Those aquariums have their own set of issues and stuff. They they um, when they dehydrate, when they start to evaporate, that chamber in the back will tend to get lower. And if you got a heater back there and you're not paying attention, uh, that evaporation can get so low that your heater will malfunction. And that can cause all kinds of problems. Or it'll shut off and just cause a problem by not doing its job. This is kind of a cool, cool little tank. Like this would look great on a desk. It's really neat. Uh, I haven't plugged the light in to really check it out. Let's see. Now uh, it's got a touch mode. So you can go blue, white, and off. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'd say the light is okay. It's definitely not super bright. I don't know. It's it's maybe as bright as, as the Fluval spec ones, but well, it could be a little bit dimmer. The housing and stuff that it's in is nice and sturdy. It's not going to get damaged from evaporation, and it's attractive. I'm not sure if it'll work on a timer, but there's a good way to find out. Timer test. Boom! It worked. And of course, I almost forgot, you know, we've got this little deal here that simply fits onto the end of this. It makes an attractive little way to uh, control where the water is being directed. So it's interesting the way they've got the water flow. So there's, there's some inlet holes on the side. To me, other than just the size and it being kind of a three gallon aquarium, the filter is probably the weak link. A lot of that stems from me uh, not being a huge fan of box filters, but there are some kind of other issues with this. Uh, there's a big intake. There's a big intake right here in the front, right down here. And if you look, you can see, uh, you can see some biological material in there, some of the ceramic material, I guess. There may be a way to open this up and pull it out, but it's not, it's not immediately obvious. And I'm scared I'm going to break it. I'm messing with it too much. And to be totally fair, I mean, I haven't read the instructions at all. I mean, just, just a little bit. I kind of glanced at them just a little bit. But um, I don't see the way to open that. And if you're using it as it is, without something in front of it, that material could get clogged up pretty quick. I mean, really, you want... You want some sort of pre-filter before you get to your ceramic because the ceramic can get clogged. And if it gets clogged, how are you going to replace it or get it out? Usually that's not too big a deal because you're going to keep, you're going to keep this stuff for, for quite a while before you replace it. But you do, uh, people do tend to replace their ceramic ever so often or at least refresh it, add a little bit other stuff to it. There's plenty of room in here to really mod this out though and mess with it. Uh, if you take both of these things out, there's a whole lot of room in here to, uh, to do a, a few things. You can still mod this out pretty good though. Uh, you know, especially if you're taking, if you're taking these little pre-filtered things out, there's a, there's a lot of room in there to kind of make some changes if you want to make them. If you had to use this filter, if you're getting this, you're like, well, I want to use the filter it came with. There's no shame in that. It's going to work for you, uh, at least for a little while. So although I've made a lot of remarks and suggestions that are around different parts of things, just take it with a grain of salt. There's all kinds of ways to get there with your filter. Um, even if you just fill this thing up full of, uh, you could even fill this thing up full of sponges and it would still probably be a pretty effective filter. The shape and form factor are really interesting. You don't see uh, this small of a bowl front and glass a whole lot. I, I like that. I think it could be a great little office tank. Could be a lot of fun. I'd really like to know how to get in there and take that apart. I'll be looking that up 
uh, of course, after this video. It's neat. It's got all kinds of possibilities. I think if you're willing to do what it takes to keep a little three gallon tank up, uh, this could be a fun little project for you. We're going to set it up real soon and have some fun with it. Look for that in a future video. Okay, folks, thank you so much for stopping by. It was a pleasure to see you once again. I'll be back next week with an update, and I'm probably going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it a remediation update. I've got a couple of kind of updates I want to do. I might do a, just an all aquarium update. I typically don't make things that coincide with holidays or dates or something like that, but I have actually made a few, uh, a few spooky stories. So if you're looking for something fun this Halloween to watch, I encourage you to watch uh, some of my spooky videos. <laughs> I made one earlier this year. It's my, kind of my version of a Twilight Zone story. Uh, I did it in January. So I'm going to add a card at the end of this video if you'd like to see it. I made a lot of other funny and fun videos like in and around October. But I've got a few other videos like that. I should probably make a, a Sean spooky video playlist. <laughs> I'm back to interrupt my, uh, my turtleneck cohort once more, but I've got something incredible to show you. Look what arrived in the mail the other day. We've got these two huge boxes. Marineland is basically making it rain to help promote some new filtration that they have. And uh, they have sent me a number of products to, to look at and demo. Now I said, you know, I don't really need to hang on the back filter right now, but it looks really cool. I've used the penguins for years, and uh, I'd love to take a look at them and see what the new ones are all about. And what they've told me is, uh, it's like, well, maybe I'll do a giveaway. So I said, hey, if you send me send me a filter or something to do a giveaway, and I'll I'll unbox it, I'll show it off, and then I'll give some to my viewers. And then they sent me all this. Like they they sent me so much stuff. So, I'm not even sure what all is in here, but I'm going to go through this next week. We'll do a demo. It looks like we've got at least two filters here. We'll open these two filters, do a demo, and then I'll announce what I'm giving away because I'm not keeping all this. So, I'm going to give away at least, I might keep one of these. So, uh, we got two and then three of these brand new, this is brand new, their best new state-of-the-art filter from Marineland, all being given away next week. What? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I think this is the most, uh, this is the most any company said, hey, you know, we believe in your videos and we're gonna, we're gonna help sponsor a really special giveaway. This is huge amount of money to be to give away it's going to actually cost me a little bit to mail all this out <laughs> so that is next week's video uh after that we'll probably start doing some updates we're gonna do some all aquarium updates that'll be coming up early november now i'm sending you back to turtleneck sean from two days ago to uh send this out but until next time follow your bliss keep a clean tank and i'll see you soon thanks so much for stopping by No, so as you know, Aqua. Uh, thank, uh, well, folks, thank, uh, folks, that's about all I've got for you this week. Thank you so much for stopping. Oh, and folks, that's about all I got for you this week. Thank you, thank you. And like I said before, even if you don't like this, there are all kinds of possibilities. Always, this happens every time. <laughs>